Hi, I'm Jennifer. Planning a wedding is supposed to be one of the happiest times in a person's life. But for me, a shadow loomed over it, one I wouldn't fully understand until it was almost too late. I was set to marry David, the love of my life. Everything was prepared. The venue, the dress, the vows, all framed against the backdrop of our beautiful hometown. As we finalized the details, my cousin James stepped in to help. Few people knew, but James had once had feelings for me. He even asked me to marry him, promising a life of luxury, knowing that marrying me meant a share of our family's significant inheritance. But his intentions never felt genuine, so I chose David, who I love for his kindness and sincerity, not his wealth. Jennifer, let me handle the cake and the food arrangements. You focus on being the beautiful bride, James offered, always playing the role of the supportive family member. Yet, something about the way he looked at me didn't quite match his friendly tone. Thanks, James. I really appreciate it, but are you sure? That's a lot for you to take on, I replied, a little hesitant. I insist, Jennifer. It's the least I can do. This will be the best wedding our family has ever seen. His words were reassuring, and in the whirlwind of planning, I was grateful for the help. As the big day approached, David and I were excited, ready to start our new life together. Family and friends gathered from near and far to celebrate with us. Everything seemed perfect, almost too perfect. Babe, are you sure about James handling the catering? After everything, David asked one evening. Yeah, he's family. Plus, he's been eager to help. It's nice to see him so involved, I reassured him. But as the wedding day drew closer, James started acting oddly. He seemed overly interested in the guest list and seating arrangements. Make sure you put me somewhere I can see everything, Jen. I want to make sure it all goes smoothly, he said. Sure, James. I'll have the planner seat near us. I responded, rushing off the unease that crept in. Looking back, I should have noticed the signs. But I was too caught up in the joyful haze of wedding preparations to see the storm brewing. The morning of the wedding was perfect. The sun was shining. The air was filled with the scent of flowers and laughter from loved ones echoed around us. I felt like I was living in a dream as I prepared for the ceremony, slipping into my dress and having my makeup done. Meanwhile, James was busy with his own preparations, none of us aware of the sinister nature of his plans. He had volunteered to manage the wedding cake, a stunning three-tiered masterpiece meant to be the centerpiece of the reception. His demeanor was calm, but Mia, one of my bridesmaids, noticed his hands trembling slightly. Mia, does James seem off to you? He's been hovering around that cake like it's gold. Another bridesmaid whispered. Maybe he's just nervous. It's a big day for all of us, Maya replied, though her doubts lingered. She watched as James meticulously adjusted the cake's placement, his eyes darting around as if to ensure no one was paying too much attention. Satisfied, he stepped back, wiping his brow and offering forced smiles to anyone who approached. As I walked down the aisle, my heart was full of joy, my gaze locked on David. The ceremony was everything we had dreamed of, full of love, laughter, and heartfelt promises. The reception was a blur of happy moments, the cake standing proudly at its center, beautifully adorned with flowers that matched the theme. James mingled with the guests, his smiles a little too wide, his laughter a little too forced. He often glanced at the cake, then at me, his expression darkening for a moment before he smoothed it back into one of familial pride. Maya remained suspicious but decided to keep her thoughts to herself, not wanting to cast a shadow on my special day. Eventually, James approached David and me, raising his glass in a toast. To Jennifer and David, may your life together be as sweet and perfect as this cake we're about to enjoy, he said, his voice dripping with irony only he understood. Little did we know, those words would soon take on a far darker meaning. As the reception continued, the dance floor filled with laughter and love. David and I shared our first dance, lost in each other's eyes, the world around us fading away. Then, the moment everyone had been waiting for arrived, the cutting of the cake. We approached the beautiful dessert, cameras flashing, applause filling the air. We sliced through the cake together, sharing the first piece as a symbol of our new life. But as guests began to eat, the joy quickly turned to confusion. Minutes after the cake was served, I felt a strange churning in my stomach. Glancing around, I saw similar expressions of discomfort on the faces of our guests, David included. Jen, do you feel okay? My stomach. Something's not right. 
David whispered, concern filling his voice. I don't feel good either. Let's check on the others. The room buzzed with worry as more guests complained of feeling unwell. Little did we know, James's bitter jealousy had turned our joyous celebration into a nightmare. The celebration quickly turned into chaos as panic spread through the reception hall. Guests stumbled from their seats, some collapsing, their faces pale with fear. Shouts for help echoed through the air, mingling with the clatter of chairs being overturned. Mia, remembering her earlier suspicions, rushed to my side, her face etched with worry. Jennifer, this can't be a coincidence. Everyone got sick after eating the cake. We need to call for help, she urged. Without hesitation, we called for ambulances. Soon the sound of sirens filled the air, a stark contrast to the wedding bells that had rung just hours before. Paramedics flooded the venue, tending to those most affected, including David and me, as they hurried us to the hospital. Lying on the stretcher, my mind raced, piecing together James' odd behavior, his fixation on the cake, his unease, and his desperation. All signs pointed to a sinister motive born from jealousy. Check the cake, it might be poisoned. James, I managed to whisper to the paramedics, my voice weak. They nodded, their professionalism a small comfort in the chaos as we were rushed away. At the hospital, doctors quickly administered treatments for poisoning. Thanks to their swift actions, the antidotes began to work, lessening the effects of whatever toxin had been in the cake. As I lay in the sterile light of the hospital room, surrounded by beeping monitors, the full weight of what had happened sank in. What should have been the best day of my life had become a nightmare. But amidst the turmoil, my resolve strengthened. James would have to answer for what he had done. He had not only endangered David and me, but had also put our entire family and friends at risk. David sat by my side, holding my hand, his face filled with concern and confusion. We were out of immediate danger but the emotional scars were just beginning to surface. Jen, what you said about the cake and James, do you really think he could have done this? His voice trailed off, unable to fully grasp the horror of the situation. I know it sounds crazy, but remember how he insisted on handling the cake, and how nervous he was. Something wasn't right. We need to talk to the police, I said, my voice firm. David nodded, squeezing my hand before reaching for his phone. The conversation with the authorities was brief, and soon after, detectives arrived at the hospital. Their faces were serious as they took our statements, the gravity of the situation clear to everyone. The investigation moved swiftly. The cake was tested and confirmed to contain traces of a potent toxin. With this evidence in hand, the focus turned to James. He was brought in for questioning, and under the weight of mounting evidence, his denials began to crumble. In a stark interrogation room, the walls closing in on him, James finally broke down. His confession was a volatile mix of anger, justification, and a twisted sense of betrayal. I loved her. I deserved to be with her, not him. It was supposed to be me, James shouted, his voice cracking under the weight of his emotions. The detective's voice remained calm but firm. You poisoned your own cousin and her guests, jeopardized lives, because she didn't love you back. James's face twisted as the full magnitude of his actions began to dawn on him. His plan, driven by jealousy, had spiraled into something far darker. In his mind, if he couldn't have me, no one else should. The confession sealed his fate. He would face serious charges and the legal consequences would be severe. But it was the personal betrayal that cut the deepest. As David and I sat together, listening to the confession, we were overwhelmed by a mix of relief and sorrow. Relief that the truth had come out in sorrow over the family bond that had been shattered beyond repair. James, once someone I trusted, had become a stranger, consumed by greed and jealousy. Back in the hospital room, as David comforted me, we realized that our ordeal was nearing its end. The physical recovery would be swift, but the emotional healing would take much longer. Yet, in that moment, we knew we would face it together, our bond strengthened by the trials we had endured. As the night deepened, our resolve solidified. This was not just about moving past the nightmare, but about ensuring our future was protected from such toxic influences. The hospital room, once a place of anxiety and fear, became a sanctuary for us to plan the next steps in our journey. Let's do it right this time, Jen, David said softly. Just us and the people who really matter. I nodded, agreeing wholeheartedly. A small ceremony. No grand spectacle. 
just love, joy, and the people we trust. In that quiet moment, we found peace in taking control of our destiny again. We decided on a serene, intimate location, far from the painful memories of what was supposed to be our happiest day. Meanwhile, James would face the consequences of his actions. Although James wasn't prosecuted legally, the fallout from his betrayal was severe. He was excluded from the family and shunned by those who had once considered him kin. In the end, he lost far more than he had bargained for. Stripped of his place in our lives, the respect of his peers, and any affection that could have been salvaged, his fate was sealed. A life marked by isolation and regret. It was a punishment that fit the nature of his crime, meted out not by a court of law but by the unforgiving gavel of social and familial judgment. As David and I moved forward, we leaned heavily on the support of those who stood by us. Our rescheduled wedding became a symbol of resilience, a beautiful understated affair that focused on the depth of our love rather than the grandeur of the event. It was perfect, filled with genuine smiles and heartfelt wishes, a stark contrast to the darkness that had tainted our first ceremony. The day of our new wedding arrived bright and clear. As I walked towards David, the sun casting long shadows on the ground, the trials we have faced felt like distant memories. We exchanged vows with a deeper understanding of their weight, promising to protect and cherish each other, no matter what lay ahead. David whispered, no matter what we face, we face it together. Always and forever, I replied. In that moment, surrounded by the warmth of those who truly mattered, the lessons of the past months crystallized into one simple truth. Love, when fortified by trust and mutual respect, can weather any storm. James' attempt to destroy us had only strengthened our resolve to build a life defined by the values we cherished. As the celebration continued, laughter and music filled the air, and David and I knew this was just the beginning. A lifetime of shared moments and dreams, each one affirming the enduring strength of our love. James' actions had brought our story to a dramatic climax, but we had transformed adversity into the foundation of a stronger bond. Now I want to hear from you. Do you think the social and familial ostracization James faced was a sufficient consequence for his actions, or should there have been legal repercussions despite the personal resolution? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed our journey. Subscribe for more content and let's continue the conversation.